Welcome back. Uh, this is the, I'm told, the Pollinate Podcast. So uh, we're pollinating today. Um, and we're delighted to have John Kroll here. Uh, John's a neighbor and they grow pumpkins and vegetables and bedding plants and raise all kinds of hell up there about what 15 miles north of us uh, so uh but yeah we're happy to have you here john and uh just wanted to kind of get an idea so tell us a little bit about what you guys do up there at the kroll international farms world headquarters we just we're just a family operation with i got two boys working with me now and and uh it's a it's a family farm that's been in my family for since the early 1900s so just doing what we do we're very diversified we're really strong about diversity so what all do you grow what's what start in the spring with the bedding plants we got four or five greenhouses full of annuals and perennials uh, then we go into sweet corn pretty hard in the summer and then in the fall is the pumpkin squash and and then firewood in the winter so we keep everybody busy year round. I'm amazed at how your firewood business has done. It just seems like you guys are thumping that year round, right? Yep, it's year round. It used to be a winter thing, but now it's year round with the the backyard burn pits and all the restaurants and stuff, bars being closed down. Everybody's sitting in their backyards drinking cider and watching the fires we wish they'd drink more cider instead of the damn <laughs> seltzer and all that <laughs> stuff yeah but uh anyways uh yeah so all right so you got all that going so you guys go way back your dad granddad how, how hey, it's actually my mom's family's farm the wolf's out of mount vernon the doctor dr wolf out of mount vernon started with it Mom, mom was from Mount Vernon. Dad was from Solon, so they met half. They settled halfway in between. <laughs> yeah, just to get along. Yeah, and how'd you get into the farming end of it? Never left it. Never left it since high school. Now I heard something. We had a we had a woman that worked here that told me something about you. She said that you were the catch of the high school. She said John Kroll, every girl. Um, in that high yeah, school, yeah. had her eyes on you. That's why I had to go to Mechanicsville in <laughs> Iowa and find one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, so grew up on the farm. What were you guys farming when you were young? We had cattle and corn and beans and, and alfalfa, pretty much. It's so the traditional. So what led you to mix that up? Our location on Highway 1. And just the idea that uh, when I started, interest rates were 19%, and uh, corn and beans weren't. That was during the farm crisis of mm. the 80s, 82, 83, and always came up about 10, 15,000 short every year. Yeah. Had to figure out either get an off farm job or find someplace else to make money. So what was your first step in that direction? Probably firewood. Yeah? Firewood oh, and, and then sweet corn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But that was back when you could get nickel draws, too, so you didn't have to sell so much firewood. <laughs> <laughs> didn't take a... No, it just <laughs> took one or two loads a week, and you could you could have a pretty good time. But uh, <laughs> times have changed now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, the beer's expensive. Cider, unfortunately, is too damn cheap. But yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna plug <laughs> yeah. that cider thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, so so you got in firewood, and how'd the whole greenhouse bedding plants thing come around? Had a niece that was in the landscaping business and wanted to have a little greenhouse to start some bedding plants in and stuff for her landscaping, and built one and. Then another, and when you got women involved, it's, it's never enough. They got to have more all the time. <laughs> but that's a big jump, isn't it? I mean, going into a greenhouse just scares the shit out of me. I mean, it just yeah. looks like. And actually, it's scheduling because we start February 15th mm -hmm. with the seeds for the flowers, and and it just leads in from month to month then. 
Yeah. So I'm pretty much the production guy, I'm called. So I start six months before everybody else. And then when they're selling, I'm working on the fall stuff. Awesome. So it seems to be working. Yeah. And then the boys decided they wanted to come in, so they're gradually taking it over. Well, and I think that's that's a remarkable thing because, you know, if you look at all the trade rags, you know, all the farms, small farm, big farm, doesn't matter what kind of farm magazines you look at, there's so much stuff about how to transition it to the next generation or can you transition it or who in the hell would want to transition it, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and, and it ain't easy, right? I mean, no, and we don't, we don't have it all figured out yet. Yeah. We're just trying to win. It changes so fast. Yeah, and we're waiting for that computer program that tells us yeah, just how to do it. And I've right. run a lot of computer programs, and <laughs> I should have been a millionaire already. Yeah. <laughs> Not there yet. No, no. It's, it's all about doing what you you like doing. It's yeah. not work if you enjoy it every day. So yeah. it's, it's, you just get used to it, I guess. Yeah. But it's a challenge, isn't it? I mean, yeah. You, and I thought I raised smarter boys than I did to want to <laughs> get you back. You mean that they'd come back into it? <laughs> yeah. I didn't think, yeah. I set a good enough example that they wouldn't uh, want to come back into it. But yeah. they are, they're back. Well, it's kind of inter- interesting time, isn't it? I mean, in, in a lot of ways, the, corn beans and beef model that your it sounds like your dad was into is what most of this area is certainly engaged yep. in right and, and that that ain't looking too dang sharp right now no no well it never has yeah i mean it's always you're always on the edge um and you got the government behind you but i mean there's only and what led us of, into the diversification was our farm isn't a a flat farm it's not a corn and bean farm it's mm. river bottom and it's hills so you you just have to find different ways and we're we're located right on highway one so we've 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 got the traffic going by so it's yeah flying by flying by yeah yeah so yeah people may not know this but if you go down from here and go to Crowell farms you're going to go down an awful big hill coming right down into the Cedar River, basically. And uh, and right there at the bottom is Crow Farms. And people whiz by there, don't they? Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's busy. It's, yeah. It gets it busier busy. all the time. Yeah. We, we live in a very urbanized area. And it's, and it's tough to farm around it yeah. um, with the traffic and everything. Because so, your farm is split by that yep, highway, right? Right so through the got, middle. I'm sure there's some some challenges just to get a tractor across the road sometimes. Yeah, you can sit there a long time yeah. during rush hour. Yeah. But you just accommodate it because if you just pick up a small percentage of the people going by, then you make make your business. Yeah. Yeah, so as you've kind of gotten into this with, you know, diversification and stuff like this, um, how do you decide like what's going to be useful or what's not useful on your farm? I mean, what what do you what kind of process? And, and I'm sure it's different now with your sons involved and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, their ideas of what's useful is a lot. <laughs> we have three combines sitting out right now. My my old sixty six hundred, and then the one my boys were using the last five years, and now we have another one sitting there this year, and it's quite a contrast from what. I used to drive with no air conditioning to the one that they're going to use this year mm. with the computers and and everything. But that's does it stop the rain or not? Uh, no, it hasn't it stopped hasn't, the rain yet. <laughs> we need another three inches tonight. That yeah, would just yeah, top it off, yeah. just perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the three people watching this may not know, but we have had a a long period with no rain, followed by a week with more rain than we need for a year, damn near. And we've hit about all all the weather cycles. We uh, <laughs> we got flooded out early. We lost about 100 acres of crops early on, flooding in June. Uh, then we hit the wind. Yep. That blew us up pretty good. And then we hit the drought, and now we're back to, they're talking flash floods again tonight. So. Yeah, and uh, we're not even talking about COVID-19. No, no, we're not of, worried too much yeah. about that right now. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a real challenging year. Yeah. Uh, 
we'll see. What it, kind of damage you get with the derecho? We came out pretty good. We lost one high tunnel and a couple of roofs, uh, but we we could have lost all the greenhouses, oh. and that would have that would have took a lot to to rebuild. Um, a lot of fence damage. Uh, we got a lot of fence to build, a lot of trees. Just to trees clear. on fences. Yep, to keep yeah. the cows in. We're running about 150 cows, so we need to keep them off Highway 1. That, they frown on that when the cows <laughs> are grazing the ditches along the highway. So, And you got a lot of timber on your place, right? It's mostly timber pasture. So, yeah, okay. we've, we've got a 10-year supply of firewood now. Mm. We figure that's how long it'll take us to clean up the trees and the timbers. So yeah. Uh, well, and that's not even talking about stuff that you could go out and get oh, given to you, right? I mean, yeah, Lord yeah. knows it's, there's a lot. Yeah. Of... We're we're pretty good shape with logs now. Yeah. yeah. I heard somebody tell me that Cedar Rapids lost half of their tree canopy in yep. that storm. And it's unbelievable. Really. Most of that is going right to the chipper, though. Yeah, there isn't sure. a lot of it being salvaged. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to waste. Yeah. Yeah. You do have a, a portable sawmill, right? You still use yep, that much? Yeah, yep. not you, enough. Not I've enough. I've got logs sitting there. Yeah, it's it's hard. Not enough time in the day, so yeah. you just get done what you can get done and worry about what's left tomorrow. What's left afterwards. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, uh, all right. So, the way I see it, you kind of so you grew up in the business, and then. In your lifetime, you've built a lot of diversity into this whole thing, right? I mean, you yep. brought bedding plants and the the, the uh, firewood. I know you grow strawberries. You didn't even mention that, but you grow a lot of vegetables as well. You guys do a CSA, right? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think you're rather understated. It, this is a quite an enterprise up there at Crow Farms, and it's, it's getting busy. It's yeah. getting busy. Yeah, um, we've expanded a lot. We always worked on a 10% expansion every year, but the firewood quadrupled on us this year. And mm -hmm. there's just stuff that seems to be working, so we just keep going with it. And and then when you have young kids that are aggressive, they tend to never say no to anybody. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, it seems like you're going well, and, and uh, you guys do a good job with high V's. You're working with the, yep. the local high V's and some of the local and stores and local restaurants are really on board. I don't think that's going to stop, um, especially no. with the pandemic and stuff. Um, we can't raise enough vegetables, can't cut enough firewood. So I guess we're just going to keep doing what we do. More of what you're doing now. Yep, yep. Yeah. And make the best of it. So it's kind of interesting because if you look around here, I mean, the uh, Iowa City area, Cedar Rapids, there's there's not a small number of people uh, doing vegetable farming and uh you know sort of smaller scale farming and stuff like that but you do wonder sometimes about the economics of that right and how sustainable it is i mean i just see some some of the folks in csas and i'm thinking holy smokes i mean these folks are seriously working their butts off and i don't know it's hard to it's hard to see the future for that but what do you what do you well see that's how we developed ours that's why we have firewood we have i mean it 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 gets a little monotonous sometimes especially now that the firewood's year-round mm -hmm. but like your vegetable season your sales is, is about three months mm -hmm. and so you got to have you just can't make it growing vegetables you got to have something else and and we're stuck in that our size farm is the mid-size farm and those are the ones that they say aren't going to make it you either got to stay small and work in town or or uh, go big and i just never wanted to get in debt after going through the 80s yeah. with the interest rates and stuff so we just found a different model to go by and and uh some days you think you're crazy doing what we do like when it rains for a week <laughs> <laughs> but uh I guess it's working. The boys are satisfied, and we'll see. Yeah, it's. But I mean, I, I there's no guarantees in anything you do. I mean, in life, so no sense having thinking you're going to have a guarantee. But you do wonder about that. You hear that a lot, don't you? That it's either get big 
or scale back and really do the niche thing. And just seems to me, at least for this area, and I don't know what it's like in New York City or San Francisco or someplace like that, but, but where we're at, we've got, I don't know what the hell there is around here. There might be 300,000 people in this, you know, sort of drawing area, greater. In greater, the corridor. In the corridor, yeah, yeah. the great corridor. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at that population base and stuff, I mean, it's, it's not a huge population base, but it still seems to me like it's the mid-sized farms that can have full-time people. You know, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're on a three-month program where you're, all your sales are coming in three months, and we learned this the hard way, uh, all your sales are in three months, then how do you keep people, you know, year after year? How you keep good people yeah, that, that good, yeah, exactly. out year after year. And that's, that's where this wood business is really, because we're, we're, we've got three or four guys working year round on wood. And then if we need them, like right now for pumpkin picking, we can pull them off. And, and uh, so that's the advantage we have. We can keep, and we really lucked out this year when they closed the schools because uh, we had all kinds of help this year. Yeah. Um, I like, I think we're on the right track. I like what it does for the economy of our area. I mean, we keep eight to 10 kids working all summer long and uh, it's just money in the area. Then it, it's what is, you know, that you, your big farms are relying on big equipment and less people and we still have to have jobs in yeah. the area. And you so got to have money rolling around. You right? got to have I mean, money circulating and, yeah. and, uh, and that's that's. It would be thing. nice if it circulated my way once in a while. But <laughs> if a little it, bit of it would stop every stop, now and again, stop because <laughs> we definitely are circulating. <laughs> yeah, it's almost scary, isn't it, to see that? And I yeah. think that's what scares some folks away from sort of scaling up, uh, because a mid-sized farm is in that uh, almost danger zone, right? Yep. I mean, yep. where like you the say, ones that I don't mean, make the, it. The, the risk is higher for sure. And you, you know, there's a lot of crashes and burns going on right now. And then, like I said, if, if they wouldn't have closed the schools, I'm not sure how we would have got through the summer as busy as we were with everything. With the kids were going to school and we didn't have the help. Yeah. Um, now our school's going half days, Mount Vernon, so we're they're still coming out half half the time, which they wouldn't have if. So we're we're still trying to figure out what we're going to do next year with everything if there is a normal that we're going to get back to. Yeah, and that's a big question. But I mean the the regardless of whether it's next year or the year after, I mean the way we see it, I mean the cider business for us is what your firewood business is. It's a year round business, and yep. it it pays the bills and it. Like you said, it can help you keep good people. Keeps good people in, around. Involved. Um, and and we just don't like waste. I, my philosophy on the wood, we've got 300 acres of timber. Mm. It's just a it's a natural product for us. Sure. Otherwise, it'd just go into a fire and burn up. We try to make something out of everything that grows. Yeah. Um, and, so how do the cows fit into your... Uh, well, they're grazing the timbers, so yeah. you know we've got a lot of grass that, and it, you got to find something, and you know, and we're we're getting into tree management a lot harder than we ever have because mm. it is a it is a commodity for us now, yeah. the firewood. But to tell you the truth, we haven't cut probably only ten percent of the wood comes off our. We're getting so much wood in from other places now, oh, right. so. We're saving ours until this storm went through. Yeah. And how do you manage the cattle in the in the timber? Do you we rotational graze? Yeah, yeah. yeah we've got three main pastures we rotate through. Okay. Only one right now because I got a lot of fence to build on the <laughs> other two. <laughs> and you have, I mean, uh, so you're right down there. A lot of that is is up, but there's there's some of that that's pretty flat, right? That's still in the that goes flood under, plain. Yeah, yeah, in the flood plain. So and that's a big challenge for you. That's a challenge. It's been more of a challenge the last five years. We've lost four out of five crops since my son started farming with us. It used to be three out of seven, maybe, and it was only in the spring, so it didn't hurt as bad. So this new combine have like flotation devices on it? Does it? <laughs> no. 
it's got a reel on it for this year. Oh, does it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that'll help. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we're going to need it. Yeah. Um, and that's what the, our next phase, my oldest son, stepson, um, he likes to operate the equipment. So he'll do some custom combining, and that'll be another source of income. Sure. And that'll probably be where he's headed. With the reel, it'll help this year to for that. Probably. Oh, it's going to be a must. It's yeah. going to be a really long, slow fall. Yeah. Dangerous fall for the farmers to in this area to get that corn up. Yeah. So it's just getting started. And now this rain isn't helping that because... No, I mean, it was looking almost like a perfect fall in terms of corn and bean harvest. And then we got the derecho and then... Yep. And then knocked a bunch of the stuff the corn on the ground and yep. uh and now it's but, sprouting and oh is it yep oh no shit so that's what they got to deal with next yeah so hmm. well yeah it's always it's a it's a challenge it's mother nature it is it's, but i mean it it, it kind of goes to the point though about diversity because i mean if your whole regardless of whether you say okay corn and beans it's two different crops or but, you know, the truth is that's a commodity crop that's going into a certain system and the price isn't dictated by what you do and what you can sell to local people. It's dictated by what happens in Chicago and New York and Beijing and you know, everywhere, Venezuela World. or yeah. wherever. You know, it's it's a it's a worldwide uh, food system that doesn't have doesn't really care much or pay any attention to what happens on your farm right no nope. Whereas... everybody's yeah it's and there's some farmers grain farmers are going to make some really good money now because they didn't get their corn blown down but yeah <laughs> there's a section that's going to really struggle it's going to yeah. hurt them although the the price hasn't really budged that much right i mean it's, it's worked up a little has it to the point where some guys are getting excited mm. and um it's it's just it's going to be a very interesting fall. Yeah. And uh but I think one of the things that that strikes me is that as you I mean and and I think your example is really interesting because you've come out of that corn beans beef kind of program that like I said is so predominant in this area and moved into a diversified yet mid-sized operation that is based on diversity it's it's attracted your two boys into the business i'm not sure but i would guess that if you were in corn and beans your sons may not be quite as interested in coming back given the amount of uncertainty at at the scale that you guys operate at to um to bring two boys into it just a corn and bean it would take five thousand acres yeah five or more and and a lot of capital and a lot of capital a lot of capital and and a lot of risk. I'm mm-hmm. over sixty, and it's too late for me now. That my boys might trend that way before they're done. Yet I don't know, um, but we're pretty well established what we're doing now, and they seem to be accepting it. I just think the the thing that strikes me as interesting about what you guys have done there is that what you've done is really build in a lot of. Um, uh, not just diversity f- in, in terms of cropping, but you've built in a lot of insurance in your business. So, you know, timber is always going to be there. Firewood is going to, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, people get allergic to wood smoke or some damn thing happens. Well, they, the they could pass, yeah, the air yeah. quality or issues, air quality they could shut it down. So whatever. there's no guarantees. Right. But... but but that's not your only business, and no. you know, bedding plants aren't your only business. So if you blow away a, a high tunnel, it's not the end of the world for you. And you've still got beef cattle, you've still got corn and beans, um, you've got a big pumpkin business. I mean, you guys are the premier pumpkin grower. The biggest so challenge is making sure you're you're doing as good a job as you can with all those enterprises, yeah. and that's where the boys help it's it's a lot easier having three of us there than when it was just me uh to get it done right um getting the cattle worked on time getting getting things done on schedule because like and this weather doesn't help us because once once you fall behind with a scheduled operation like we have yeah it's really hard to catch up yeah uh, this week of rain is is really going to put us behind in picking pumpkins so it's going to take 
a big effort next week when the sun comes out to to get caught back up. Because... Well, and this is where having kids in the business is so important because they can, at least my experience is, they consistently let you know kind of what you should be doing, right? I mean, they're... they're... Every morning. Yep. <laughs> So we're not short on ideas about no, what, no. what should be doing and how fast it should be going and, and things like that. So and then when they're really good at sales, boy, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, and, and this internet thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good at that stuff. Yeah. And yeah, but it is. I mean, it's so you diversify and as a way, in a way, it, it, it really is, it becomes a, a lot more compelling, especially if you look in the future. I mean, I don't know how you see it, but. The way I look at it, you know, if if I was, I mean, my background's different where I grew up in the commercial Apple business, but I walked away from that just like you walked away or at least diversified away from, from what you had grown up with. I just don't see the future in that. I mean, apples are in the same business right now. If I go up to Michigan or you go out to Wenatchee, Washington, or out to New York, you'll hear the same story. Prices are low. Production is too high. There's just too damn much production, right? Been hearing that for 35 years. Yeah. But that still people keep producing it. So That's right. And um, we're finding more ways to technically improve our production and grow more apples or more soybeans. More corn. More corn, uh, more beef, whatever. Um, and yet it's not making people more money it's not making farmers richer necessarily i mean it does some if you scale up and you get really good at either work in the government or just you know sheer volume determination i mean and you got to make sacrifices yeah. if you want to be in the business and i hope the boys know that yeah <laughs> or they're going to find out the hard way yeah <laughs> um you got to really want to do it and I'm not. A, I haven't been a big believer on depending on the government to help you. I, I think you have to do it on your own, and you have to just be real savvy and and just grind it out. And it gets easier as you go. I mean, when and that that's the only thing I'm that why my we're growing like we are is spent 35 years building my assets up, but now I have to let my boys use my assets for them to to take it to the next level because you just can't do it starting out. And that's where I feel for a lot of the the younger people trying to like get into the vegetable business. If you don't have some assets behind it, it's, it's going to be hard. You know, oh, damn near impossible. Yeah, it's impossible to get into any kind of farming unless you have somebody's assets behind you. Well, I think that's the appeal of a of a CSA kind of model and, and, and it does provide a valuable service and you know there's a there's an appetite for it especially in a place like Iowa City um, there's a big appetite for it and you can you know you can do it on fairly small you know you don't need much equipment and it's you the don't. upfront money that the yeah. whole philosophy behind the CSA is you get the money up front yeah. and you can operate and and that's what young people need but I, it, it almost takes more than that when you start talking equipment and, and the seed costs go up every year. And, and now we're even running into some seed shortages because hmm. people are changing the way they operate in the cities, too. There's a lot bigger interest on gardening and yeah. growing their own, some of their own food and not depending. We've never had shortages in grocery stores before. Yeah. All of a sudden, when this pandemic hit, we're short on meat, short on, and it's it's opened a lot of eyes. To... So, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, what if you were to predict what what is going to happen in the sort of ag economy in this area in five, ten years? I mean, you think more of the same, or do you think there is going to be a trend towards more like what you're doing, or what do you think? I think it's just going to keep going on like it is. Um, once a farmer gets used to sitting in a combine, it's going to be really hard to change. There's not many. There's not any equipment to pick pumpkins to mm. to pick vegetables. It's it's hand, and the labor thing is always going to be a problem. Um, that you just have to find ways to to get around it. And 
I don't have all those answers because, like I said, we don't even know what we're going to do next year if school's in and we got to have more labor. It's it's actually what keeps us from getting bigger. Labor, labor is an issue um, and finding good help. Yeah. So unless the schools figure out that they don't need these college campuses and everybody goes online and, online and, and they got time to come out yeah. and work and go to school too, that's... That's a big possibility. Um, they're sure doing it now. You guys haven't brought in any H two A labor. We have, we have one. You have one guy. One. one he goes between the Hobbs Farm and and our place, so mm-hmm. he's gone right now. Oh, I see. <laughs> he's picking hops. But oh. that should be over with next week, and we'll get him back. Mm-hmm. And a wonderful man. Yeah. That, that knows knows what works about and and gets it done hmm. do you think that's a direction you'll move or i mean because the labor thing ain't going away right i mean it might no. be next year and it might not be but we can still get by with we we hire a lot of school clubs hmm. to help us and uh wrestling teams track teams and we'll probably just stay with that making donations to them and and try to get by but I'm not in charge of labor. Oh, okay. I'm production. You're production. <laughs> yeah. So I I dump that on my son. He's he's in charge of all that, and we'll take labor anywhere we can get it. Yeah. Well, it is an issue. I mean, it's not just around here. It's all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah. Where I grew up in Michigan, I mean, the whole apple industry is it's big up there, and uh, it's almost all going to H two A labor because. You just can't find. And that's why I don't know if, if we're going to get into that anymore because it, that's going to be so competitive yeah. just to get them. Um, well, that's a good point. I mean, there's um, only so many people that are Yeah, that are going to come gonna up, sign up to do it. Yeah. And then it's really, we've, we've had this, uh, Mauricio's been with us for four years now, so we've, we've got a relationship built. Um, and it'd be nice if to keep the same people. And I don't know if that's possible when you start really getting into that H2 stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what other new stuff is coming on the horizons for? I hope nothing. <laughs> I don't need anything else new. <laughs> enough's enough. I told the boys that enough's enough for this year. Yeah. We're, let's yeah. just try to get these pumpkins harvested and, and, uh, it's a challenge. We've we've got thirty five acres of pumpkins this year, so uh, we've got a, a couple of hard months to get them picked, and then and get the corn and beans done. And we're we'll be busy. We're yeah. busy, and yeah. then keep up with the firewood because we don't have enough wood cut yet either. Mm-hmm. So no, we don't need anything else new. But we did. Uh, we bought a wood processor, which is really helping us. Does that work good? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Saves a lot of late. Saves a lot of sleepless nights because your back hurts. So, uh, <laughs> so you load a log on this thing. It cuts it and splits it, right? And piles it for you. And yeah. piles it. Yeah, it'll go up an elevator and make a pile for oh, you. Oh no, kidding. So, oh lordy. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Don't ask my boys how good it works because they haven't jumped on it yet. So, <laughs> well, I'm waiting for that to happen. So. Down the road, uh, boy's going to take it off. Then what's you? What's John Crow going to do? Fishing or just, just do what drinking they tell, or do tell me? I'll do what they <laughs> tell me to do. I see. <laughs> but they're going to be hurt. My my wife retired from the post office this year, so we've got a new hired hand there now. So. I see. Yeah, she I don't know. help. She runs. Yeah, she's good help as long as I'm out in the timber cutting wood. <laughs> Works out really well. Well played. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should mention that when you go up to Kroll Farms International World Headquarters, you you can often find John. Well, not often, but sometimes yeah. he's got a little place in the back there that's, yeah, deer antlers. And I, I believe there's a refrigerator back there, if I remember oh, right. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. cooler. Yeah. 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 Heck yeah. Yeah. It's a big place. I can hide really, real easy. <laughs> really effectively, uh, yeah. 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 So when do you think beans and corn are going to start coming off, you think? Well, it's going to 
going to take a while to dry out after it's going to take a while but you'd be surprised but the leaves they're turning pretty fast seems like it yeah and uh it's going to be here before we're ready yeah uh well it's good we're looking at what a solid week maybe more of dry weather coming yeah that that would really help no, and we were in trouble. Our pastures were dry, and, yeah. and we needed the rain. Now it just needs to know when to shut off. Yeah, uh, doesn't seem to know that anymore. But it's, I told the boys this morning, it's better now than October. Yeah. Because we've had Octobers where it rains every weekend. and Like hard, last year. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to sell pumpkins when it's raining. Yeah. So yeah. we'll, that's the one thing I think that'll, it's Mother Nature's going to get us before anything else. Um yeah, it doesn't seem like we got a lot of real normal no, years. No, I don't know anymore. what normal is anymore. Yeah. And this uh, whole pandemic thing is its just redefining what, you know, it's like you said, people are interested in gardening now and, and finding things. And, Canning, and then yeah. all of a sudden you can't find lids to can with, you, yeah. you know, and uh, there's, it's, it's interesting, interesting yeah. times. It is, it is. It'll be really interesting to see. How much of that stuff sticks you know are we going back to the i'm too busy to do anything but you know i mean the the statistic that floors me that i heard and i again i mean i just heard it um is that getting on 50 percent of the meals in america are now eaten out of the house not prepared at home and i mean are we going back to that it it you know that that's a big number that's an amazing number that is uh and that changes the whole dynamics of everything we're doing yeah and uh again though it's it's hard to to expand in it if you don't have the labor to 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 harvest the stuff um and okay so you you sell vegetable plants but you can't you can only raise so many in every greenhouse and we're at our max every year yeah and uh so we're busy so we're happy, I guess, and uh, except for now, when the rain here starts, comes the damn rain. Here again. comes the yeah. rain harder now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think you do have some answers. I think you've got a, a lot more to offer. Well, we have our answer for our farm. Yeah. We've our, and it's taken thirty years to to to, to get there, and, and that's one thing that I'll stress to anybody looking at it. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, your customers don't start coming in just because you put a sign up. Yeah. You, you got to stay at it, and uh, and and you got to deliver. I mean, that's, you have that's to, the thing. You have to deliver some kind of value to people. Yeah, and I think that's what you guys shine in. Is I mean, you guys grow great pumpkins. You grow really nice bedding plants. You you know, I don't know if your firewoods. And that's and that's what we we worry about is to, if you get bigger and then you start losing the quality yeah. of your product because you're stretched too thin and so you know we're if the income's there for both the boys to have enough money and and maybe a little bit left for the wife and i (laughs) um if that's enough then that but it is a it's 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 the living that we chose so there's no sense getting upset if it doesn't go just right so do you think that Let's say you had stuck with corn and beans and beef, or now. Do you think the stress level is any different? I mean, because it is. It, farming is a stressful thing, especially if you got drought and too much rain and then not enough, too much wind and too cold or too warm. On our farm, it's, we've always dealt with it. So I, I you know, now you're, you're going to get a different answer from my wife because she came from the flatlands yeah. and she wasn't used to <laughs> what we put up with. But uh, it's a different kind of stress. It's more financial. It's more social. It's it's mm. uh, and and the the camaraderie on on in rural ag is changed now. Everything's so competitive. Um, yeah. When I grew up, all the neighbors got together and 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 worked filled silo together and and did stuff together. My dad went hunting with four other guys for 23 years out to Wyoming every year in October, right during the start of harvest. And it was just something they did for 10 days. And you, you don't see a lot of that anymore because now the neighbors, you have to bid up, bid over the neighbor for the 
neighbor's ground for the in ground, that. Yeah, right. it's it's the the social end of of rural life is is changed, and that's pretty sad, actually. Yeah. So that that puts a lot of stress on in rural. Just can't go talk to the neighbors and stuff anymore like they used to, and get together for the potlucks and and all that. But that's kind of what's making our businesses work. People want to come out to the country. And that's why we don't have to go anywhere because everybody comes out to our farm. I see. And that's the thing, isn't it? That you're, you're replacing that and it might not be a good replacement, but it is. now we have these customers coming to us and yep. you form relationships with some of them. I yep. Mean, Where um, people that aren't in our business, other farmers, they're, 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 they've got a different stress on them because they are isolated and, yeah. And it's, it's just, and, and that's what's changed about society with this pandemic, with the 50% of the people cooking at home. It, it, there's some aspects that it's improved some of the family life. Um, the kids can't, you know, the, I have a number of parents talk about not having to run to the sports, all mm-hmm. the little kids activities. Yeah. They have to find something to do with their family at home. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. No, that's and all I good. mean it is driving people outside to oh. to places. I mean, the you pick and sort of direct to consumer farms that I've talked to are just everybody saying the same thing. You know, it's just unbelievable. We never used right to now. open till October first. Never worried about opening up for people to go through the corn maze and stuff. And now we're struggling because of the rain. To we wanted to be open by the fifteenth because people are already coming out. Yeah, and. They're welcome to. They, the, you know, it's not set up the way we want to. But the livestock's still there, and and that's something we've always stressed. We got into this to promote agriculture um, with the pumpkins. Twenty twenty five years ago, the beef producers said we have to educate the public on what farming's about. So we put an acre of pumpkins out and had a little corn maze and and started having school kids out to show them and we just keep the farm it's it's still a an active farm so there's livestock and there's and you have to be careful because there's some stuff that happens on the farm that some people don't accept but uh uh and it's been pretty popular for people to come out and we you know we don't charge an arm and a leg to come and tour the farm you just come out and place is yours for october and then November comes back to it's my place again. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, people are interested, and they've got they've got their views on it. And there's a lot of misinformation that yeah. the public gets that we need to get corrected. The animal rights and the chemical use and the antibiotic use it's 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 just what they hear on the radio, and it's it's really not what it's all about no uh i grew up in the fruit industry and i will say that you know there there were two issues when i was growing up that um i think we as fruit growers we we stuck our heads in the ground um one was labor you know there was i won't say ill treatment across the board, but certainly there wasn't a recognition of the, what should have been proper for housing conditions. This, at this time, you know, almost all of our labor was migrant labor that started in Florida and came up and they were, they were beholding to you for a job, but also that you provided them the housing and yep. some of that housing was really abhorrent. And the same way with chemical use, you know, and, and uh, Rachel Carlson and stuff re- revealing sort of DDT and some of its effects. So I think that's right. I think the it, it can go too much in either direction, but ignoring it also what it invites is eventually a backlash. And I think that's the danger uh, that I see is, you know, if we don't pay attention to chemical use or we don't pay attention to labor or we don't pay attention to animal rights at all, then you can get yourself in a world of change always goes too far yeah one way and then it finds a way to come back to a a fair 
place. Yeah. Um, and, there is a lot of we, overreach that can happen. Oh, yeah. Now there is. Government um, or whatever. Yeah. And it keeps a lot of people out of the business. Um, you know, it, it almost did us, what, the stuff we had to go through. and But now we seem to have found a, a level place that everything seems to be working. Um, some of the stuff you just roll your eyes that we have to do. And... <coughs> I, I I think you should try to grow as much stuff as you can organically. There's nothing wrong with organics. I think sometimes it, it gets over publicized and and on on and the GMOs again. There's a lot of negative. There's a place for all of it. You just have to find the hap, the, the medium where it'll all work. There's we found that there's just some vegetables we cannot raise organically. It's not feasibly possible unless you want a lot of worms in your sweet corn and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you you try to raise as organic as you can and just find a practical ground on it instead of that organics is the only way and it's not the only way. And then the crop farmer saying that chemicals is the only way. No, it's not the yeah. only way. There's There's always medium in it. Yeah, and it so much depends on where you're at, too. I mean, in our instance, you know, if you're out in Wenatchee, Washington, um, you know, the, the grown in a desert, there's a lot of problems you don't have to worry about. Yeah. And um, is organic stuff grown there and shipped over here better than stuff that's, you know, some, somewhere is halfway between organic and conventional? I, I, don't, I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. Um, but you know, consumers yeah. at the end of the day have to make the decision. And I think that's the, to me, the most interesting thing going forward right now is what are consumers going to continue to push for, you know, going forward? Are they going to support farms like yours, um, that are diversified, that are swirling money around the local economy? Um, or are they going to go to go back to sort of supporting big ag and, and big ag, let's, let's be honest. Big egg includes big organic. You know, there's yeah. there's god awful big organic vegetable farms in California. You know that that they can produce uh, all kinds of organic lettuce or organic. But there's a mislead that organics is is safer than that because some of the chemicals you can use in organics are just as powerful as or even worse than um, some of the commercial stuff. And a lot of them have to be sprayed way more often. I mean, yeah. people have some idea organics is unsprayed, and that, that just could not be more no, further it's... from the truth in a lot of cases. Now, there's a lot of great about organics, I agree. There's a lot of the focus on soil. That's, that's important. Yes. And I think something that in our organization, in our farm, we need to pay a lot more attention to. Uh, yeah. And that's, you asked me where our cattle come in. We compost a, a lot of our cattle manure. Mm -hmm. So we can use the compost in our vegetable production, in our in our crop production, and so we don't have to use the commercial fertilizers. And that that's something that really intrigued me early on. Um, but now all of a sudden the regulations come in on yeah. composting, yeah. and then you go, yeah, wow, they've made it really hard to compost um, with all the data you have to Compli collect yeah. and compile yeah. and. Yeah temperatures and and turning it and uh it they it, nothing simple anymore no. um once the regulations hit it, it complicates everything and it just turns into a time thing how much time can i devote to to it and but with our operation every year it seems like it once you're involved you can add a little more because it gets easier you get used to okay I'm going to start this at this time, and then I got to have it done by this time, and then it, it, it gets easier the longer you're in it, and then you you change your equipment to make it work for you better, and you figure out what you need, and just yeah, if you looked at our operation from the outside, you'd say it's just mind-boggling, but once every year you do it again and again. It just gets routine to know what you have to, and we can do a lot better job on some of the stuff that we're doing to make more money yet. That's that's what keeps me going is, what can I do next year to to do a better job on my tomatoes? 
It would help if the high tunnel wouldn't blow down. That, <laughs> that would help a lot. But uh, I, I hopefully we won't. My mom's 95 years old, and she's never seen a storm like that. Mm. Uh, she sat in the shed with us that you were talking about, and as the roof was blowing off, she says, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> and I said, well, that says a lot considering you're 95 years old. <laughs> Yeah, well, we hope that's a once-in-a-lifetime yep. kind of experience. Yeah, we don't need to do that again. No, we don't. Well, John, thanks for coming out here, sharing what you're doing. Uh, anybody that hasn't experienced Crow Farms, you need to get your butts out there. It's uh, halfway between Solon and Mount Vernon up there on Highway 1. and uh, yeah. Can't miss it. Just look for the orange. Yeah, for the orange. And... Uh, all right. Well, John, thanks for coming by. Thanks for Appreciate having me. You betcha. Thanks, everybody, for uh, watching, listening, whatever the heck you're doing. Um, come back, see us again sometime, and uh, we'll keep cranking stuff out your way. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.